inspire myself and my team each and every day. I, I appreciate all of you being in this network. I appreciate all the conversations that we have. All right. So today um, we are going to go through a quick little uh, presentation on the way to customize your newsletter. Uh, for those of you on the STAR program, your newsletters are being filled. We're putting your clients' names in them. And so this is a quick way to add things to it if you want. And for those of you that aren't, um, you can add anyone you want to these newsletters. It's the simplest way to um, get the word out monthly about what you've got going on in your world. And uh, it, it takes no effort. So I wanted to show this because I realized last week we were all sort of uh, surprised by something simple that our market advantage offers. And this was another one of those things that I bet you don't remember that uh, is a good uh, update. Welcome to Market Advantage e-newsletter. I'm Anne Marie Burnett and I will be your presenter today. Today we will learn how to activate, customize, and add contacts to your e-newsletter. Market Advantage is Real Living's tool to create professional marketing pieces such as postcards, brochures, flyers, greeting cards, etc. using our professionally designed templates. These versatile materials can be used with postal mail, email, web postings, and professional printing delivered to you or mailed on your behalf. Market Advantage has over 3,000 marketing pieces, 95% of which you may email or print in-house. You also have the option to use an MLS integrated piece. In this case, you would select a listing and it will pull in the pictures and details for that particular listing. In order to access Market Advantage, you will sign into your Real Living Business Center at my.realliving.com and click on Market Advantage in the left menu. Market Advantage will open in a separate window, allowing you to toggle back and forth between your Real Living Business Center and your Market Advantage system. The first time you access Market Advantage, you may need to download the latest version of Microsoft Silverlight. This is a free download and you will be presented with on-screen instructions on how to do this. Just make sure that you agree with the terms and conditions. So what are e-newsletters? The e-newsletter is an automatic email message that goes out once a month to the contacts you've selected. New content is provided each month by Real Living, but you have the ability to add your own articles and feature your listings to customize the e-newsletter as your own. So how do you get to the e-newsletter? Well, from your business center, you're going to click Market Advantage in the left navigation menu. This will bring you to the main Market Advantage page, which will open in a new browser window or tab, depending on your browser settings. You will click e-newsletter in the left navigation menu. The e-newsletter tool will open on the right side of your screen. There is a video tutorial available by clicking watch the video at the top of the screen. The button in the newsletter home section will show active by default. If you want to deactivate your e-newsletter, click the button to change to e-newsletter paused. Whenever you see a question mark icon, next to a radio dial or a setting or an option in Market Advantage, you can hover over it for a pop-up description of the item. This will help you better understand the steps that you are taking. You have the ability to select when you want to receive an e-newsletter mailing reminder message from the Remind Me drop-down list. This helps you be certain your monthly edits are completed by the scheduled mailing. The e-newsletter goes out the first Tuesday of each month, so in this case, I would be reminded three days before it was about to go out so that I could get in and do any edits or customization that I'd like to do. You also have the ability to enter the subject line you wish to appear on your e-newsletter in the email subject box. This way you can customize it a little bit. Maybe you want your name in it. Maybe you want to name your new newsletter something special. You can put that in the subject box. When you've completed your changes to these settings, you can click to the right of the email subject 
and click Update. You also have the ability to preview your e-newsletter at any time, and you can post it to your website. And what it'll say is, join my e-newsletter, and it requests the contact's information, their first name, last name, and email address. And once they add that, they're automatically added to your e-newsletter. You will receive an email telling you that, hey, you have a new lead or a new contact that has joined your e-newsletter. So this is a great way to drive leads and drive people to your website. You can enter a customized greeting to appear at the top of your e-newsletter. This allows you to target your specialty markets and keep the message fresh throughout the year. Click the editing pencil for the personal greeting option. This will open a pop-up editing box where you can enter the greeting message that will go out at the top of your e-newsletter. You're going to enter your greeting text in the box. And you have formatting options as drop-down lists at the top of the box that allow you to change the font and text size. The Mail Merge Variables drop-down list allows you to insert items in the message that are automatically completed for each recipient, making the message personal. And here's the list of those. You can scroll through them when you're in Market Advantage. You just need to place your cursor in the message where you want the variable inserted and then select it from the drop-down list. So in this case, you can see our says, Dear Pound Pound Contact First Name Dollar Sign Dollar Sign. That's the code that will enter the contact's first name automatically, customizing each newsletter with the recipient's first name when it is sent. So if you use a variable that doesn't have a matching information in your contact's information, it's simply going to leave it blank in the greeting. But in this case, if I'm sending this to Betty Byer, it will say, Dear Betty. You also have button options here that let you bold, italicize, or underline the text. You can change the text alignment and make a bulleted numbered list. You can also indent the paragraphs, change the text and background colors, and create clickable links to internet contact it, uh, content in your message. So to find out what a button does, all you have to do is hover your mouse pointer over it, and a pop-up hint will describe the button's function. When your editing is complete, you're going to click Save, in the lower left. You also have the ability to add listings to your e-newsletter. The e-newsletter allows you to feature your listings in your message. Just click the editing pencil down here uh, for active listings, or you can click the big Manage Listings button in the toolbar at the top of the screen. The property screen will open with your loaded listings showing. This is the property screen here. To the right of each listing is a status button. Active means the listing will appear in your e-newsletter. Inactive means it will not be included in your e-newsletter. Inactive is used when you have an extensive inventory and don't wish to feature them all in the current e-newsletter. So you can make it active at any time without having to re-enter the listing information. To the left of each listing is the editing pencil to make changes to your existing listings. So maybe you have one in here, and it was just listed, but now it's just reduced. You can click this pencil, go in, and change it to be just reduced. The red X allows you to delete the listing completely from your e-newsletter. Click Add New Listing to enter a fresh listing for your e-newsletter. A pop-up listing information box will open, and this box is used for entering new listing information or for editing existing listing information. So here is where you can choose a status. That goes down here. And then you can fill in the appropriate blanks. It does require the MLS ID and the address and state the bedrooms, baths, the price, status, etc. But you can also add a URL that takes you to the property details page of this listing. I recommend adding the picture of the listing. You can also add driving directions. 
and there's a place to add text. All you have to do to add the image is just click your Add Change Image to select a photo for your e-newsletter, and the photo selector pop-up will appear. To use a previously loaded photo, you're simply going to select the photo file in the list and then click to upload a new photo file, you'll click Upload New Image. This will prompt the Upload New Image box to appear. You'll just click Choose File to search for the file on your PC or your Mac, and a pop-up open dialog box will open. You'll click on the photo file and click Open in the lower right. You'll return to the Upload New Image box, enter a name for your photo right here, and click Save. Your photo file will now appear in your list of pictures. You can highlight it and click Use Image to select it for your e-newsletter. Scroll to the bottom of the listing box to enter the property description. You have formatting options, this drop-down list at the top of the box that allow you to change the font and text size. And once again, you have button options that let you bold, italicize, underline, etc. to customize your listing description. When your listing is complete, you want to click Save at the bottom of the screen. The pop-up box will close and return you to the Properties screen. You can click Return to eNewsletter Home to return to the eNewsletter Home screen. You may also customize articles for your e-newsletter. Your e-newsletter comes with a fresh set of articles every month that are provided by the Real Living Marketing team. You can let it go out with just these articles, but it will be the same e-newsletter as everyone else is sending. We recommend you add some custom articles of your own to personalize your message for your contacts. The e-newsletter will permit you to select which of the provided articles are used and addition, add additional articles of your own and set the order in which the articles appear. So from the e-newsletter homepage, you want to click the Editing Pencil for Articles, or click the big Manage Articles button at the top of the screen. The e-newsletter article screen will open on the right. This page will list the articles provided by marketing for the month and any custom articles you have loaded in the system. The first column, Included, uh, allows you to quickly select the articles for your e-newsletter. Be aware that for an article to appear in the e-newsletter, it must have the box checked in the included column, like this, or this one's a good example here, and it also must be set to active. The next column is the order number. Articles are displayed in your e-newsletter in sequence with the lowest number as the first article. You can type an order number in the box directly, or you can use the arrow buttons to move the article up and down in the sequence. Here are the arrow buttons. When your changes to the order are complete, click Save Order of Articles down here at the bottom. To the right of each article is its status button. Once again, active means the article is available to appear in your e-newsletter, and inactive means it's not available to be included in your e-newsletter. Once again, inactive is used when you have an extensive list of custom articles and don't wish to feature them all in the current e-newsletter. You can make it active at any time without having to re-enter the article. This is perfect for seasonal articles. The left of each article is an editing pencil, which allows you to make changes to your existing article. The red X deletes the article completely from your e-newsletter. The headline column lists the title or headline of the article. The category column indicates whether the article is one provided by Real Living, marked admin, or a custom article you created marked personal. So here is one of the real living. It's marked admin, and here's one of your personal ones. So I just need you to be aware that you can neither edit nor delete 
the admin category of articles provided by Real Living. You can only select whether they are included in your e-newsletter and in what position. So for this one, if I want it included, I would check the box and I would put the number or use my arrows to scroll it up and down to the order that I want it to be in. In this case, if I wanted to not include this admin article, I would just uncheck this box and then it's not going to be shown. To add a new article, you're going to click the bottom button that has the big plus sign that says add new article. A pop-up editing box will open. This is the same editing box you will open if you would like to edit an existing article. Headline, which shows over here as well, is your title for your article. That's your headline text. The main article body goes in the text box below. You have formatting options, this drop-down list again to change the font and size. The mail merge variable gives you a drop-down list that allows you to insert items in the article that are automatically completed for each recipient, making the article personal. All you have to do is place your cursor in the article where you want the variable inserted and select it from the drop-down list. And here's an example of the drop-down list. So in this example, you can see, can you believe it? contact first name. So if this is going to Betty Byer, it's going to say, can you believe it, Betty? It's that time of year again. Time to set your clocks ahead one hour as daylight saving times begins at 2 a.m. on Sunday, March 9th. It's just a very nice way to keep your contacts involved and make it feel really personal with them. The contact first name mail merge variable automatically customizes each newsletter with the recipient's first name when it's sent. If you use this particular mail merge variable, um, once again, if you don't have their first name for some reason in your contacts, which I think it requires that, so you should be good there, but if you don't have something that matches what you've chosen, it will simply leave it blank in the greeting. Here again, you have the ability to bold, italicize, underline, use bullets, change the font color, um, use highlight by filling in text, etc., to further customize your article. You can also indent with the paragraphs and uh, create clickable links to the internet contact in your message. To find what a button does, just hover your mouse pointer over it and a pop-up hit will describe the button's function. When this is completed, you're going to click Save at the bottom of the screen. The pop-up box will close and return you to the appropriate property screen. And you can click your big return to e-newsletter home to return to the e-newsletter home screen. You also have the ability to add web links to your e-newsletter. Your e-newsletter has the ability to include links to websites in a link list. We automatically provide links to mortgage calculators in your e-newsletter, but you can add additional information links of your own to match your marketing. For instance, would you like people to know about the community festival in one of your subdivisions? Uh, maybe you want to send out some local sports scores. You can send them to the appropriate sites. So in order to do this, you're going to go to your e-newsletter homepage and you can click the pencil that says you have, typically if you haven't added any zero active links, or the big button at the top that says manage links. The e-newsletter link screen will open on the right. This page will list the web links you have loaded in the system. To the right of each link is its status button. Active means the article or the link will appear in your e-newsletter. Inactive means it won't be included in your e-newsletter. So this means that you can have an extensive list of links and activate them as appropriate for the particular e-newsletter you want them to be in. To the left of each link is a pencil icon which enables you to edit the link. The red X allows you to delete the link completely from your e-newsletter. If you want to add a new link, you'll just click the Add New Link button 
You can always find it by looking for the green plus sign. And a pop-up editing box will open. This is the same editing box you will open if you elect to edit an existing link. The link text is what actually appears as the clickable link on your e-newsletter. The URL is where you enter the destination website address. When your link is complete, you'll click Save. The pop-up box will close and return you to the link screen. You can click the Return to e-newsletter home button to return to the e-newsletter home screen. To preview your e-newsletter, you're just going to click that button that I mentioned at the beginning of the session that says Preview e-newsletter. This will open a pop-up window with a preview of your e-newsletter as it will appear with your current changes in place. This preview is fully functional, so test all your links, articles, and properties to ensure they are correct. If you used mail merge variables in your e-newsletter content, they will show with the variable name in the preview and not the data that will actually appear when the e-newsletter is sent. So don't panic if you see dear pound pound contact first name dollar sign dollar sign. <laughs> it will look correctly when it goes out to your contact. If your e-newsletter doesn't look right when you preview it, return to the appropriate editing screen to update your greeting, listings, articles, and links. You can click the X in the upper right corner to close the preview window. So now let's add some contacts to our e-newsletter. Um, now that you've completed it, you need to add your subscribers. So you may click the pencil uh, for contacts or click the Add Remove Contacts button in the top menu. The Contacts Receiving E-Newsletter List screen will open, and this is what it looks like. The list on the left side of the screen contains the list of all your contacts, groups, and interests. The list on the right side of the screen contains the list of contacts that are receiving your e-newsletter. This list is persistent, meaning you don't need to edit it every month. To change from contacts, groups, or interests view, you simply click on the appropriate tab. You can search for a contact by last name. Just type their last name in and click the search button. Clicking the letter in the alphabet strip will pull up anyone who has a last name beginning with that letter. So if I'm looking for Betty Byer, I can click on B. And Betty Byer will be there along with anybody else with the last name that begins with B. You also have a go-to page here. If you have a very long list of contacts, groups, or interests, you can type the page number in there and click Go. And it will jump to the page you think that particular contact group or interest is on. I have the ability to select all my contacts by clicking this button or I can unselect all of my contacts by clicking the button with the red X. Once I've selected my Contacts tab, Groups tab, or Interest tab, I then have the ability to check the particular contact group or interest I want to add to my e-newsletter. All I have to do is check on my contact and click the big arrow with the plus sign that says Add Selected Contacts to e-newsletter. When you add the subscribers or contacts, the system is going to go through a validation process to ensure that your contacts have enough information to deliver your e-newsletter. This is what it's going to look like over here. Notice I only added one contact. So it says I have one valid contact. It will tell me if I have any invalid contacts and give me the opportunity right then to update that contact so I can get it added to my e-newsletter. In this case, in order for it to be valid, it's the contact is going to need an email address. So if you add a contact that does not have an email address, it will let you know, hey, this is not a valid contact. Once you've added your contacts to the right, you'll notice there's an active button beside that contact. You can make this contact active, which means the subscription is running and the contact will receive your e-newsletter, or you can pause the contact and make it inactive inactive 
meaning the delivery is stopped and the contact will not receive your e-newsletter. If you want to remove a contact, you can simply check the box and click the Remove Selected Contacts from e-newsletter button. And I have a big one down here, which is easier to see, and they'll go back over here. You're not removing your contact permanently from your contact management system. You're simply removing them from the e-newsletter. Now, a couple of neat things about how this works. Market Advantage is smart enough to know if you've added maybe a couple of groups. Maybe you added a buyer group and a um, gardening group. And maybe Betty Buyer is in both of those groups. Well, our system is smart enough to know that and will only send Betty one e-newsletter. She will not get a duplicate. Furthermore, no matter how many contacts you add, it always looks like it's going to them personally. They cannot see the other email addresses of the other contacts. And when they open their email, the e-newsletter does not come as an attachment that they have to open, but it actually opens in the body of the email so they can see it immediately. So once you've finished adding your contacts, or updating your subscriber list is the technical term, you can click to return to the e-newsletter home screen. So congratulations, your e-newsletter is now ready to go. Once again, the default delivery date is the first Tuesday of each month. Thank you for attending today's session in Market Advantage e-newsletter. I truly hope that this was beneficial for you. Remember, you may find more how-to tutorials and recorded sections in your Real Living Learning Center under the Market Advantage tab. I look forward to having you in another session. Thank you. All right. I know she's not as lively as Stephanie with, uh, with her presentation, but um, good stuff. Thank you, honey. Yeah, hopefully everybody's using that. It's the, it's sort of the simplest thing that you can do to maintain contact with your client because it's always fresh content. Even if you do nothing, it's fresh content. And then if you add your own stuff to it to jazz it up and make it cool, then it's doubly good. So. Hopefully we'll no, and it's really good because we had a little team meeting yesterday, and you know it's funny we we do things when you really look at your your what we're doing, we do transactions, the transactional piece, but the biggest part of our job is our marketing piece, and it's really crazy to kind of get that all organized. Now there's some of us that definitely have it organized, but on the flip side. Um, you know, it's something that I'm striving to get better at in organizing my database. And if you need, or my marketing, and this is one piece that can go out once a month with useful tips that more than anything, it just stays in front of them and keeps reminding them that you're out there, even if they don't open it up. But it's something very simple just to, to get on your program. So I like that. Perfect. It's